JBN we keep you informed. Alleged robbers shot gun seized in Constitutional St. Andrew. The St. Andrew Central Police are reporting the seizure of three firearms during an operation in Constitutional in the parish early yesterday morning. The police say two men were also shot and injured during the incident. The police further say that about 6.30 a.m. they responded to reports that a group of heavily armed men were carrying out robberies in the area. On their arrival, the police say they were attacked by the gunmen. The police say they returned fire and two men were shot and injured. They were taken to the hospital for treatment. The police say the operation is still ongoing and that more information will follow. Pervert sexually assaults madman. A St. Catherine man who pleaded guilty to a charge of burglary involved in an elderly man believed to be of unsound mind has been sentenced to one year in prison at hard labor. Justice Christina Brown, who imposed the sentence in the St. Catherine Circuit Court last Friday, also ordered that the 27-year-old convict's name be listed in the Sexual Offenders Registry. His name has been withheld to protect the identity of the victim, who was 62 years old at the time, and his family. The man also pleaded guilty on June 19 to assault occasionally in bodily harm for hitting the elderly man in the face during the attack and was sentenced to one year at hard labor. The sentences are to run concurrently. Brown, in handing on the sentences, explained that she took into account the fact that the 27-year-old man spent three and a half years in custody awaiting trial. The maximum sentence of buggery is seven years. The incident took place in Lindstead, St. Catherine on the night of December 14, 2015. According to the evidence, the victim was walking along the roadway when the man pulled him into a lane, removed his clothes, and buggered him. Calvin Allen, Vendelin Cameron Powell among senior cops reassigned. The police high command yesterday afternoon announced that several divisions will be headed by new commanders following the reassignment of eight of the force's gasset officers. Assistant Commissioners of Police, ACP, Calvin Allen, and Gary Welsh are to trade places, making the latter the new head of the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, while Allen will take up command of the Operations Branch. There are to be two new faces in Clarendon and St. Elizabeth. Senior Superintendent, SSP, Glenford Miller, who currently heads the St. Andrew North Division, will take over the reins from SSP, Vendelin Cameron Powell, as head of the Clarendon Division. SSP Cameron Powell will take up her new post at the services branch. Meanwhile, Superintendent Samuel Morgan will leave the services branch and take over from Superintendent Catherine Lord as commanding officer for St. Elizabeth. Superintendent Lord's new assignment will see her serving at the inspectorate of the constabulary. Superintendent Leonardo Brown moves from the services branch to the newly formed technology branch while the St. Andrew North Division will have a new divisional head in the form of Superintendent Layton Gray. Pregnant woman held in stabbing death of brother. A pregnant woman was arrested by the St. Thomas Police after allegedly stabbing her brother to death during a fight in the Stortfield District on Saturday. The deceased man has been identified as 28-year-old Everall Burke of Stortfield Seafort in the parish. Police report that sometime after 12 a.m., an argument developed between Burke and his pregnant sister over a cell phone. A fight then developed during which a knife was allegedly used by the woman to stab Burke, who later died at the hospital. The woman, whose identity has been withheld by the police, is to be questioned before charges are profit. No bail for man who set St. James' woman on fire. Nikayla Facey, the St. James man who allegedly set an elderly woman on fire in April after he failed in his bid to rape her, had his bail application put off until July 24 when he appeared in the St. James Parish Court last Thursday. Facey, a laborer of Lima District near Delphi, is charged with murder arising from the death of 74-year-old Evelyn Blair at the Connor Regional Hospital in Montego Bay two days after she was reportedly set ablaze by the defendant on April 25. During Face's brief court appearance last Thursday, attorney at law Martin Thomas, who represented Facey on behalf of his lawyer Shelley Ann Heyman, asked for the defendant's bail application to be put on hold as he currently does not have a fixed place of abode. Thomas further explained to Judge Sandra Wong-Small that the defense was in the process of taking additional instructions from Facey 
In order to be adequately informed before making the bail application, once more subsequently set the bail application for July 24 and instructed that Facey remain in custody until then. According to the allegations, approximately 3 a.m. on April 25, Blair was in her one-bedroom house when Facey broke in and tried to rape her. Blair managed to chase him off with a machete. It is further alleged that approximately 6.30 that morning, Blair was walking along the roadway towards her daughter's house when Facey approached her and threw a flammable liquid on her before setting her on fire. Blair was rushed to the Cornell Regional and admitted with burns covering 98% of her body. Facey subsequently turned himself over to the police on June 4 and was picked out during an identification parade on June 8. He was charged following a question and answer session on June 9. Martin Henry remembered as man of faith and family. The life and times of Martin Emerson Dwight Henry were perfectly captured throughout his Thanksgiving service on Sunday as hundreds from near and far gathered to pay respect to their brother, father, husband and friend described throughout as a man of faith and family. For many who gathered at the Kencott Seventh-day Adventist Church on Osborne Road in Kingston on Sunday, the service was exemplary and touched on several areas Henry championed including church, education and family. From the touching tributes, 17 to be exact, five of which were musical, done by family, friends and colleagues, the congregation was given a complete review of the man Henry was up to the minute he died. As fate would have it, Henry, a revered political historian, collapsed on May 28, just minutes after providing the nation with commentary on the life of former Prime Minister Edward Siaga, who had passed away earlier that same day. The SDA Church summed it up saying it had put a stalwart leader to rest, one who they had thanked in life and saluted in death. Dr. Merrick Walker, Executive Secretary of the Jamaica Union Conference of SDAs, said in tribute, Like a river beyond its bank, our sorrows overflow, and like a fallen and shattered glass, our hearts are broken. Our world bank is bankrupt, and our strides are stricken, as we face the dark night of a fallen star, Martin Henry, the Reformer. Henry, who was an ardent educator, was lauded by peers at the University of Technology, UTech, where he served with distinction for more than 20 years. Dr. Paul Ivey, Associate Vice President at UTech School of Graduate Studies, Research and Entrepreneurship, said the university community remained shocked and saddened by the sudden passing of his beloved, respected and universally admired colleague. Have you said, his passing has left a yawning void at the university. University chaplain Pastor Holland Thompson summed it up accurately when he said we have lost a brilliant star from our galaxy. Martin Henry's contributions to church and education were equally matched by his involvement with family life and for that he was loved deeply by those closest to him. His brother Dr. Herrick Henry told the congregation that Martin was 21 years his junior and gave insight on how he became the last of 12 children. He came to us when his mother was 48 years old and his dad was 56 years old. Already some of his siblings had sons and daughters that would have to call him uncle. One would expect that he'd fit in with the old saying, Oh, people pitney, what else him can do? But almost on the day of his birth, he was a mature person, Dr. Henry told the gathering. Martin's son and daughter, Theodore and Laurie, were towers of strength for each other at the podium as they stood tall delivering their dad's eulogy. Laurie shared that it was just in January of this year that she received autobiography documents properly categorized by her father for different sections of his life with dates in sequence. So we didn't have the challenge of trying hard to find a lot of information from various sources to put together. Instead, we had the problem of knowing what to leave out because he basically gave us everything we needed already, said Laurie. Laurie said that for her dad, education was a poor man's savior and the leading family devotion was very important to him. As you heard before, he had great mastery of the English language and also had a deep appreciation of Jamaican Creole and he would bend it to suit his purposes. He often said, me born for school, meaning I am to be a scholar, Laurie said. Officiating Pastor Derek Bignall took at least two important things to Martin's death. One, 
I'll never leave my home angry with my wife. And two, I will never tell you that I'm coming back soon, Bignon said. I would put what my mother would say, God's willing, or if life is spared. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.